we're going to be in 1 John. We're going to continue our first study in 1 John, and we're going to be in chapter 2. We're actually getting close to finishing chapter 2. Um, I'm going to call this the last lesson in chapter 2 because what we start covering next week kind of takes us into chapter 3. So I'm kind of ready to be out of chapter 2 of 1 John. But this is good stuff. Like what we're talking about today is good stuff. So 1 John chapter 2, we're going to be starting in verse 24. So when you guys find it, um, drop in the comments, amen, when you find it. Amen. Or say here, amen. But um, while you're finding it, if you've got your version app or your Bible, hopefully you have a physical Bible or uh, on your phone or something, go ahead and pull it up. Um, so while you're finding it, what are we doing? I'm trying to get a dog happy. We have, sorry, we have a lot of commotion because we got a dog and a cone and he had ear surgery and we don't know what he's doing. He's being rambunctious and tearing the, th the house up. He's knocking everything over. So um, I'm going to try not to focus on that and focus on this. So um, while you're finding it, say amen. And while you're finding it, I've got a question for you. Have, we, have you ever either had or been a house guest? Have you ever had or been a like had a house guest, have somebody stay with you, or have you been a house guest and that person that is staying with somebody? Say amen if you have, if you've um, been a house guest or if you've had a house guest. There's something about house guests, like some house guests can um, be welcome and some can be unwanted house guests that you you don't want to stay, you, want, you don't want them to stay for a while, but you're cool if they come and stay for a little bit. Um, but... We always use this phrase whenever we have house guests, um, and you guys probably know what it is, but if you have ever had somebody stay with you, um, eat, whether it's just a little bit or whether it's an extended period of time, how many of you have ever said, just make yourself at home? Make yourself at home. I'm sure we've all said that or we've all had that said to us or something along those lines, but... Do you really, if you stop and think about it, do you really know what you mean when you say make yourself at home? Basically, what you're saying is you're saying make yourself like you live here. So you have free range to the fridge, free range to the closets, free range to the supplies, the TV, the everything, the electronics, free range to everything. You're saying basically make yourself like you live here. That's kind of a scary thing. I'm going to hesitate next time I tell somebody make themselves at home because when I really started thinking about it and studying what that actually meant, um, it kind of is a little bit um, scary to think about. Hey, Laura. Or, hey, Ma. Laura, what am I doing? Hey, Ma, how you doing? Um, so sometimes, the thing is, sometimes we treat the Word of God this right here, and the Holy Spirit, like those unwelcome house guests that we tell to make themselves at home, but we really don't necessarily mean it. Have you ever stopped to think about that? Like we invite them in and we tell them, make yourselves at home, but do we really give them access to everything forever? Or do we just say, you can come stay temporarily me and y'all's apple Yeah, exactly, Leslie. <laughs> yeah, we have told Leslie to make herself at home before, and she's drank up all our apple juice. Um, so, and she killed a fish, but that's okay. That's another story. <laughs> she didn't kill it. It just, it was ready to be, it was ready to go meet Jesus on its own. Um, but sometimes we make the word of God and the Holy Spirit like that unwelcome house guest that we say, make yourself at home, but we really don't mean it. We're really like, uh, I hope the stay is only a little bit, and I hope you don't really get too involved in our house and what's going on at our house. Um, where we find ourselves here is John is instructing us here the importance of um, residing, remaining, and abiding with God the Father, with Jesus the Son, and with the Holy Spirit. That's where we find ourselves here. Um, let me go ahead and read it. And no, not the fish. <laughs> Yeah, sorry to call you out like that. Um, uh, poor Bubbles. He went on to meet Jesus. So um, let me go ahead and read the word and then we'll jump in. I've got three quick points. Um, hopefully it's a lot quicker than it has been. That's the plan anyway, because um, I know we got other things to be doing tonight. But 
I just got a good word and I want to share it. So if you're there, 1 John chapter 2, uh, verse 24 through 27 is what we're going to read. Say amen. 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 <laughs> Even though you guys aren't... <laughs> Are you watching? Okay. I guess they're staying out there with the dog so that he's happy. So, um, all right. Verse 24 says, what you have heard from the beginning must remain in you. If what you have heard from the beginning remains in you, then you will remain in the son and in the father. And this is the promise that he himself made to us eternal life. I have written these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. The anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. Instead, his anointing teaches you about all things that is true and is not a lie, just as he has taught you. Remain in him. Let me pray, and then we'll dive in. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you that your word never returns void. I thank you that we can open up your word, and we can invite the Holy Spirit in, and he mixes with the word and changes lives. Lord, be now in this time. Lord, I pray that you increase and that I decrease. Your Holy Spirit, take these words of mine and use them for your good. Lord, be with everybody watching this and let their hearts be prepared. Let them receive a word from you. And we give you the glory, honor, and praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Okay, so what we have to do, what John is telling us that we have to do here, is we have to go from making God, the Father, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit... Instead of making them unwelcome house guests, we have to make them more than a guest. Everybody say more than a guest. More than a guest. Type in the chat or in the chat, in the comments more than a guest. That's the title of this message, more than a guest. We have to make these things, we have to make the presence of God in our lives more than a guest. More than that unwelcome house guest that we really don't mean to make themselves at home. The first thing we have to do is we have to find, in verse 24, we have to make him a permanent resident. Make him a permanent resident. Um, John goes on and he says there, he gives us a command. He gives us two, type, two things here in the first verse, in verse 24. He says, what you have heard from the beginning must remain in you. Must. That word must there is a very strong word. Okay, It's actually a present tense word. And so if you guys know anything about, I'm not going to give you a lesson on the language, but if you know anything about present tense, I know I've mentioned this many times before, but present tense means continual. Everybody say continual. That means daily. That means every day, all day, every day. Um, you are to make him remain in you. And how do you do that? You constantly meditate on his word. You constant, constantly think about him moving in your life. You constantly lift things up in prayer, and you do it all in the Spirit. That's how you must. You let him remain with you. Make him a permanent resident. So not only does he give a command, but he also gives a condition. He says, if you continue on reading, he says, um, what you have heard from the beginning must remain in you. And from the beginning, what that means is, that means the good news, the gospel, the good news of Jesus. So what you've heard from the beginning, we've all heard the good news of Jesus, right? Amen? We've all heard the good news of Jesus. And we are to take that good news and let that remain in us and take that to a world because we live in a world that is full of bad, that needs good. A good, a bad world needs good news. Say that again. A bad world mean, needs good news. <laughs> okay, so that's the command. And then he gives us a condition. He says, if you have heard from the beginning, if what you have heard from the beginning remains in you, so he's saying... If you do what I just told you to do, if you take the good news of Jesus and it remains in you, then you will remain with the Son and the Father. So not only do you make him a permanent resident in you, but you then become a permanent resident with them. And that is good news because I, would, I don't want anybody else to have control of my life and to be a, a house guest with me than the Father and the Son. Father God and Jesus the Son. Amen? Um, so, you have to make him a permanent resident. You have to take these things with you continually. That's the important thing. Continually. Every day. All day. Every day. Um, and when you do that, he gives us a promise. So he says, if you have heard, if you, 
if what you've heard from the beginning remains in you, then you will remain with them. And this is the promise. And that takes us to the number two point. The number two point is you have to make heaven your permanent residence. Make heaven your permanent residence. So he goes on and he says, this is the promise that he himself made to us, eternal life. Now, the way that the sentence right here is kind of is constructed is really kind of cool. Um, so the promise is eternal life. So you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You let him have control of your life and you let his good news remain in you and you take that out into the world. Then he remains in you, you remain in them, and you have an eternal place in heaven with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit for all eternity. That is great news. Um, but he's, the way that the sentence is constructed, the way the sentence actually re literally reads is the promise that he himself promised us. So he says promise two times in that sentence right there. And then he also says he himself. So he's stressing the promise is a very important promise. It's a very big promise. And also, it's a promise that he made. And when God makes a promise, guess what? He keeps it. He never goes back on his promise. That is a very key verse in the, the once saved, always saved. You accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are secure forever. You have eternity forever in heaven. And so, not only does, is there a promise attached to that, but there's also, when you talk about eternal life, you talk about there's a power attached to that. Have you guys ever heard of resurrection power? There's actually a song by Chris Tomlin called Resurrection Power. And we actually, when you are saved and you have the Lord living inside of you, you have the Holy Spirit residing inside of you, there is a power that you have that is a resurrection power, eternal life power that you can take out into the world. And that's the joy. When you, see, when you talk about being the light of the world, when Jesus tells us to be the light of the world, that's what he's talking about. He's saying that you have resurrection power running through your veins. Resurrection blood running through your veins. Now that's kind of cool to think about. The resurrection blood is the blood of Jesus. You don't literally have his blood running through your veins, but you have resurrection power running through your body. And that resurrection power gives us the ability to, number one, not be deceived. That's what he says there. He says, I have written these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. So if you remember last week, or if you went back and watched last week's lesson, we talked all about counterfeit. Counterfeit Christians, the counterfeit Christ, which is the Antichrist, which I encourage, still encourage you to go back and read those scriptures and read more about him because we need to learn more about him because we need to know when he is actually here and he's taking his reign. Um, but the Holy Spirit, the resurrection power, the eternal life power inside of you, which is the Holy Spirit, helps you to not be deceived by those counterfeits. And the count, not only the counterfeit Christ, so the counterfeit Antichrist, but those false teachers that we talked about last week, the ones that um, give just a little bit of good, a little bit of Bible and then twist it and a lot, whole lot of not Bible. So it's just enough Bible to make you think, oh man, what they're saying is that's good stuff, but it's really not 100% accurate. So the Holy Spirit, this resurrection power, this eternal life power is what enables you to, dis to distinguish those things and not be deceived. Okay? And it also gives us the power to overcome evil. Everybody say overcome evil if you want to overcome evil. I know the last couple of days, I've wanted nothing more than to overcome evil. I, don't, I even prayed last night in the prayer, and I've, it's been my daily prayer, is that Satan, get behind me and get beneath me where you belong so I can stomp on your head and because you have no power, no control over me. The Holy Spirit, this eternal life power, this resurrection power, is what gives us the ability to overcome evil. And Romans, uh, Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 17 through 21, actually has a good scripture about that. So it says, this is Paul writing. He says, do not repay anyone evil for evil. You guys, you guys listening out there? Do not repay anyone evil for evil. So that person that's done you wrong, you're not to pay, repay them evil for that. Instead, you're supposed to overcome that evil with good, okay? I'll get there. Do not repay evil anyone evil for evil. Try to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. If possible, on your part, live at peace with everyone. Friends, do not avenge yourselves. Say, do not avenge yourselves. <laughs> Revenge is not yours. Revenge is the Lord's, okay? He's going to take care of those that wrong you. 
Do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for his wrath. For it is written, vengeance belongs to me. Wow, I just said that. <laughs> kind of cool. Vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. That's what we're doing Tuesday. We're feeding, not necessarily the enemy, but the community. I'm sure there's enemies out there, but we're feeding them. We're giving them food and we're giving them water to drink. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For in doing so, you will be heaping fiery coals on his head. Mm. That means that the Lord is going to use your good to your enemy to repay your enemy. That is such powerful stuff right there. Like, that should encourage you not to do anything evil to anybody that has wronged you, okay? <clears throat> do not be conquered by evil, but instead conquer evil with good. The Holy Spirit is the only way that you can do that. When you try to go after somebody, somebody does wrong, does wrong in your life, does tells a lie about you or gossips about you or um, steals something from you or does something wrong to you, you try to do that on your own strength and you're going to end up causing more harm than you are good. But you do it in the Lord's strength and in the Spirit, remember, in the Spirit, then you're going to do exactly what Paul was talking about right there. Repay them good and the Lord will take care of them. He will heap coals on their head and make them realize that the Lord is in control of your life, not Satan. Not today, Satan. Amen? So the Holy Spirit. So that leads us to the third point. The Holy Spirit. You have to make the Holy Spirit your present revealer. Make the Holy Spirit your present revealer. Not, And I'm not talking about like Christmas presents. Because I know kids, all, all my kids, all kids are saying amen. Yeah, I want, I want somebody to reveal my presence. No, your present day revealer, okay? Make the Holy Spirit your present day, in your present time, he's going to reveal things to you, okay? Um, look at verses uh, 27. Look at verse 27. The anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you don't need anyone to teach you. So the first thing that we see here is we see the anointing. We talked about this a couple weeks ago, the anointing. Um, it may have been last week. No, it was a couple weeks ago. The anointing. Um, that anointing is the Holy Spirit working in your life. The anointing, I didn't talk, touch on this a couple weeks ago, but anointing, the word in Greek actually is charisma, not charisma, but charisma. It means to spread like an ointment. So when you talk about anointing, we talk about anointing with oil back in those days. That's what they did. Um, but this is really kind of cool. This kind of jumped out at me when I was studying this, but the root word of charisma is Christos. And can anybody guess what Christos means in Greek? Anybody? Christ. Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the word anointing means to spread like an ointment. And it comes from the root word Christos, which is Christ, which is what we're supposed to spread all over our lives. The anointing of Christ and the, uh, the ointment of Christ is supposed to spread all over us to where it heals us and it covers us. And it allows us to withstand evil. That's another thing. It, it, um, ointment allows uh, to withstand infection and stuff like that. So the anointing jumped out at me today. We have an anointing. If you're saved, if you ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, then you're sealed once and for all with the Holy Spirit. And that is the anointing that you need. You don't need anybody else to teach you anything else. Like you don't need me teaching you. Because you have the anointer, the anointing, the Holy Spirit living inside of you and it will teach you all things you just have to allow it okay and that brings us to the the, the last thing that the holy spirit does it is an illuminator okay um i like this word illuminate what it does is it and john actually kind of explains it there he says the his anointing teaches you about all things that is true and that is not a lie so he reveals that's what illumination does is it reveals i know we've talked a lot about light versus dark um and that's exactly what it's talking about right here. The Holy Spirit is the light living inside of you that will reveal things. It will reveal sin in your life and expose that darkness in your life. And it will reveal what the truth is that you're hearing. It'll, it'll distinguish truth from false with what you're hearing and what you're reading. That's all you need to be able to learn and grow in Christ. Okay? 
I actually gave, um, if you haven't caught my sermon from Sunday, I actually gave a, an equation that I'm, I love this. I, I'm going to, I think I'm going to copyright it actually, because I have not seen anybody call this, this, or come out with this or post this or anything like that. Um, but it, um, I called it the equation for revelation, equation for revelation. And so we all want revelation from God. We all want to know, to hear from God, to see God working in our lives and see what God has our, in store for us and plans for our lives. This is the equation for God to speak to you. This is the equation for revelation, okay? It is the word. So this right here, the holy word, the word of God, plus prayer, plus the Holy Spirit, which is what we just got done talking about, equals hearing from God a.k.a. revelation, a.k.a. illumination. That's all you need. That's all you need in life is the word of God. You need to, first of all, get in this, add that to prayer, and add that to the Holy Spirit, and all of that mixing in your life will reveal things in here. It'll reveal things in prayer. It'll reveal things in meditation and just letting God speak to you. It'll actually even reveal things in life around you in something that somebody else says or another sermon that you hear or somebody that prays for you or something that you come across on Instagram or on Facebook and it'll reveal things to you and he'll speak to you through all of that when you mix those three things together. The word, prayer, and the Holy Spirit. You have to have, if you leave any one of those parts of the equation out, then you're not going to get the answer. It's going to, I was talking to um, somebody on Sunday a little bit more and I was telling them if you leave one of those prop, one of those parts of the equation out, it's almost like it turns into algebra. And say amen if you hate algebra. I, you haven't even gotten to algebra yet, <laughs> but um, I actually loved algebra. But it almost turns into where you're solving for x, because if you leave any of those prop parts of the equation out, then you don't have the the rest of the equation, and you're having to solve for x, and you're that's unknown. So you have to have all parts of the equation, the word plus prayer plus the Holy Spirit, and he'll speak to you. And I have three scriptures that actually um, go right along with that. So the first one is Psalm 118, 19, and it says, this is David writing, it says, Open my eyes so that I may contemplate wonderful things from your instruction. So David is praying for God to open his eyes, illuminate him, so that he can contemplate on the wonderful things from his instruction, which is the word. Okay, John 14, 26, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, the father will send him in my name and he will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I have told you. That's Jesus talking. Aiden says amen also. Yeah, <laughs> all my all my algebra haters hate saying amen. Yeah. Okay. John 14, 26. So this is Jesus talking. He says that he's going to send the Holy Spirit, the counselor. And he will teach you all things and remind everybody of everything that Jesus said. He's talking to his disciples right there. And that's what he's saying that the Holy Spirit is that second part of the equation that is going to illuminate things in their lives. It's going to illuminate and bring to memory everything that Jesus taught them. Just the same way the Holy Spirit illuminates this. It brightens the word. It's like going from darkness to light. Like going from uh, reading this in plain old old school TV to read it in four, what is it? 420 HD, 1080p, 20i, whatever the word, whatever the numbers are now for it. I don't know, but it illuminates it. Okay. The last verse, Ephesians 7, Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. And this is Paul writing again. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that the perception of your mind may be enlightened so you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the glorious riches of his inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his vast strength. I pray. So that, Paul, that's all three parts if you caught that. That is the instruction, which is the word of God. That is the counselor, the Holy Spirit, teaching and illuminating. And this, and this is Paul praying that the God of our Lord Jesus will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge. So that's prayer. That's incorporating all three parts of the equation. You have to have all three parts of that equation. And God will speak. I promise you. Because he promises that. And his promise doesn't come back void. He always fulfills his promise. And 
He gives us the power and the ability to take this out into the world. And that's what we have to do. That's what we're called to do. And so I want to give um, an invitation for you out there. I'm not going to go through an invitation or, or pray a prayer of invitation. But if you haven't let Jesus, the Son, come into your heart and reside there permanently and not make him just a guest, but let him have, make, make himself at home, and be permanent resident. To do that, you have to let him have every single part of your heart. You can't keep this little part over here because that's a sin that you don't want him to touch. Or this part over here because that's a person and a relationship you don't want him to touch. Or this part over here. You can't let him have, you have to let him have access to the whole entire thing. Everything. You have to let him reside permanently and have full access. Full access granted. Okay? If you haven't done that, I encourage you, all you have to do is reach out and you have, it, Roman says you um, believe that he is Jesus that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for your sins and buried and was resurrected on the third day and that you just got to believe and you will be safe is what it says so I encourage you to do that if you need um, if you need more information on how to do that then you can drop it in the comments or you can reach out in a message to us I'd be happy to, to message you back and to um, maybe even talk and walk through that. Um, but it's the greatest decision you'll ever make. It's not the easiest thing in life because in order to follow him, we have to take up our cross and follow him. And that's what we've been doing a lot this week is taking up our cross and following him no matter what happens and no matter what comes in this life. But it is the best decision you will ever make because who else do you want on your side but the God of angel armies to be in you and around you and behind you and in front of you? Amen? That... I don't need anybody else but him. I'm glad I have other people. I'm glad I have my wife and my kids and you guys out there. But I don't need anybody else but him because he's all I need. He's all sufficient. So um, I encourage you. I'm going to pray and um, drop in the comments or message us if you need more information on how to make Jesus Lord and Savior of your life. Um, and let him just come in. Those of you that have been just, let, just making him a house guest, an, un an unwelcome house guest, let him be let him, let him be permanent. Let him reside in there and get every have access to everything. Have access to the uh, all of your laundry, <laughs> all of your dirty laundry and all of your what you hide in the fridge, all your junk that you hide in your fridge. Let him have access to it. Let me pray and then um, I'll go ahead and wrap the video. So Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for your word. I thank you for this time together. I thank you for every single person that is watching this or that will watch this in the future. I pray that you speak through this and that if somebody needs encouragement, I pray that it provides encouragement. If somebody needs um, conviction, I pray that it provides conviction. You know every single person that is watching this or that will watch this and you know how to speak to every single person. You're the only one that can take these words and the word of God and mold it to shape and to speak to every single person in an individual way. And I pray that you do that right now, Lord. If there's somebody watching this that needs to uh, reach out and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior for the first time, I pray that they don't hesitate and they do that. They do that first thing. Lord, if there's somebody that needs to grow closer to you and let you move in permanently and become a full-time resident in their heart, I pray that today be that day. Lord, we love you. We ask you to uh, forgive us of our sins, and we lift up all prayer requests that we've been mentioning and praying over, and we give you all glory and honor and praise, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, amen. 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 And drop amen in the comments. And I love you guys. And... Um, yeah, until next time, um, I guess we won't have a video tomorrow because there's no youth video senior tomorrow. Spotlight. It is Senior Spotlight. Jada. Yes, we have Jada. We're going to spotlight Jada all day tomorrow. So, um, Jada, if you're watching or if you do watch this, be ready, girl. We're coming after you. So, um, that's tomorrow, Friday. We may be doing, we just did that. I don't know if you guys caught, we just did that last time. Um, we have some ideas, but um, yeah. And then until next time, um, I'll let you guys know about how service is going to be on Sunday in the, in the next coming days. 
Um, we haven't decided if we're, I'm still seeking God's guidance on that, if we're going to do a parking lot service or if we're going to do online again, only again. So, but stay tuned. I'll let you guys know. And I love every single one of you and praying for every single one of you. Bye.